Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can draw a dog using a colored pencil. Before we get into the tutorial, all the materials that I've used are listed in the description below and if you use the Jackson links then you get 10% off of your first order with Jackson's if you live in the UK. So if you see anything that you fancy using or checking out for yourself, pop along there and you can get yourself 10% discount on your very first order. So let's get straight into the tutorial and the first thing that I always do when I'm drawing dogs is start the eyes. I always like to draw the eyes as I feel it gives me a bit of a connection to a portrait and it gives it a little bit of life. If I'm just drawing fur and haven't drawn the eyes it can look a little bit scary to me so I always like to make sure that I pencil in the eyes at the very first point. So to do the eyes what I do is just generally outline using one of my darkest colours so for me this was a dark sepia. Just add in all of my darkest parts and then I start to fill in the iris. So to do the eye I make sure that I use circular motions with my pencil that's just to make sure that I try and cover as much of the tooth of the paper as I can. So I like to make sure that everything is really nice and smooth and as I'm drawing the eye I like to burnish with my pencil as I go along. So I like to increase the pressure on my pencil the more layers that I build up just to try and smooth everything out and smush everything into the tooth of the paper. Once I've got everything correct in the eye then move on to the highlight and for the highlight of this one I just use some warm greys just to add in a little bit of contrast, just to add in a little reflection of clouds and everything in there. Usually once I've added all the colours to the iris and everything I find that it dulls the darker parts, it, it makes them appear a little bit lighter so I just have to go back over with the dark sepia or my dark pencils and readjust the darkness so they can get the contrast and the values correct within the eye. I like to spend a lot of time on the eye because I feel like it's one of the most important parts of the portrait especially if it's somebody's dog and especially if it's a dog that's passed over and you just may need to make sure that you get everything 100% correct when you're drawing the eyes. The eyes are the window to the soul as they say so spending a little bit of extra time and getting this correct is really worthwhile. So then what I do is then move on to the fur and the fur on this dog that I'm drawing is quite wiry in texture. This is a border terrier which I'm drawing so the technique was a little bit different to what I usually work with. So I put down my base layers, so for this I used buff titanium and warm grey 1. And then I went over with some secondary layers with warm grey 2 from the polychromos and then I started to add in my mid-tones. So for this I used a Beaster polychromos pencil and to begin with I just used very very light pressure as I always do when I'm layering and building up the colour. I just went in very very lightly with my pencil and started to add these little lines and I started to, de to depict all of the individual strands just by using very light pressure just mapping everything out with the Beaster pencil. I then built up the pressure on the Beaster pencil and built up the layers so that I could darken the areas that needed to be a lot darker. So for me this was around the eyebrows where you've got this little border terrier expression and also around the edges of the ears. Majority of the forehead on this border terrier was actually quite light and quite bright so I didn't actually have to add in that many layers. So if you're working on something that has quite a bright highlight and is quite light in colour you don't have to add that many dark layers anyway. You can burnish and build up the layers with your lighter colours. So for me I just built up the colours with the buff titanium and the warm grey one and that Beaster pencil and then just added in some of the darker tones with some walnut brown and burnt sienna. And I just built up the layers, just very going in very very lightly, just slowly building up the colour and then increasing the pressure on my pencil just to burnish everything together so it looked really nice and smooth. So the next step I did was focusing on the ear. So the ear was quite a contrast to the actual fur on the face. The fur on the face is quite wiry and coarse looking, whereas the ear was quite velvety and soft. So the technique was a lot different here. So for the base layers on the ear, I actually did a little bit of shading. So I just went back and forth with my pencil, again using very, very light pressure, using light layers, just building up the colours ever so lightly. I always work from light to dark as well, so I 
built up my buff titanium and warm grey one then I built in my mid-tones so I used some Beaster pencil and some brown ochre then I built in my darkest tones so I used some burnt sienna walnut brown and dark sepia from the polychromos for the ear because I wanted to get a really nice soft velvety finish I did go in and burnish a little bit with some Caran d'Ache luminance white pencil I also increased the pressure on my pencils just again to try and get everything to look really nice and blended and smooth. I wanted to try and eradicate as much of the tooth of the paper as possible. So just increasing the pressure on my pencils helps to blend everything together and it helps you to feel the tooth of your paper. So just continuing to build in the darker colours. Of course I always added the darker colours in those darkest areas. So you really need to make sure that you study a reference photo, especially if you're drawing a pet portrait. Make sure that you study where your darker values are and where your lighter values are. That's the key to drawing realism is getting your lights and darks in the right place. Especially if you're drawing someone's pet or a dog that somebody knows very very well, you want to make sure that you get the bone structure exactly right when you're drawing somebody else's pet. So once I'd finished the ear I went back over and completed the right hand side of the border terrier's face. So I used the same principle. I put down my base layers, so buff titanium and a warm grey one, and then I built in some of my mid-tones. So I went back in with that beast of pencil, again, mapping out where all of those little coarse wiry marks are. So to do that, all I did is just created some fur lines with my pencil. So I used really light pressure to begin with, just to map it out. I always go in with light pressure to begin with, so you don't end up spending a long time correcting a mistake. It's much easier to correct a mistake if you use lighter pressure than if you go in with really, really heavy hand and a hard pressure on your pencil. So always make sure when you're inserting and mapping everything out, make sure you use light pressure on your pencil. It's much easier to erase and it's much easier to forgive your mistakes when you use lighter pressure. So I just mapped out everything with the Beaster pencil, just adding in some fur lines here and there just to make sure that I get everything right then I went in with harder pressure and a few more layers of the beaster and built the darker areas. So the fur lines that I did I put my pencil down on the paper and as I moved my pencil and stroked along to create a fur line I lifted my pencil so it tapered off at the end. So it was a lot thinner at the tip of the hair than it was at the base of the hair and that's the principle that I applied to the entire of this portrait just by mapping everything out with the beaster pencil. The beard on the border terrier was actually quite a difficult task and this is quite similar to drawing curly ears or curly fur or hair. What I did here was I put down some base layers so for this I actually just went in with the warm grey one to begin with and then I went in with my darkest tone so I went in with the dark sepia and I just mapped out where all of those interchanging hairs were so I think of the fur in terms of clumps when I'm doing this rather than individual hairs so what you want to do is visualize your reference picture just look at the different shapes and different clumps that you can see within the fur and map those out with your darkest pencil so I mapped all of those out with the dark sepia pencil made sure that I got it correct so to do that I went in with a light pressure first made sure that everything was the right shape everything was going in the right direction and then I went in with a little bit of a harder pressure and just added in the darker tones with the dark sepia and then I went in with my mid tones for the beard on Riley there weren't very many sort of really mid tones they were just light and dark so what I did was just added in an extra layer of the warm grey one and the warm grey two just burnished everything up made sure that everything looked quite nice and smooth or as smooth as wiry coarse fur can look then I moved on to the nose and this is one of the favorite parts of a portrait for me I always start in just by blocking in the nostrils and that middle centre line that runs down the nose. So I use the dark sepia pencil and just map out the outline of the nostrils and that line and any darker outer edges of the nose. Then I start to add some colours within the nose, so I add the base layers of warm grey 1 and warm grey 2. And then I start to fill in the mid-tones of the nose. So for the nose on this border terrier I used some cinnamon from the polychromos I also used a little bit of brown ochre burnt ochre and I just burnished everything together with the polychromos pencil so I burnished everything with the warm grey 2 and the warm grey 1 and then I just added in my dark tones with the dark sepia 
To add the nose texture, what I did was just use very, very small circles with a very sharp dark sepia pencil and I just made small open centered circles to create the nose texture. I then went in with a sharp Caran d'Ache Luminance white pencil and just added in any little spots of highlights in there. So having a really sharp pencil enables you to create some small details and it also enables you to get a better lay down of the colour on the paper. So using a sharp white pencil is able to just get some little pinprick white details that the nose needed to give it a little bit of an extra oomph. I made sure that I blended the nose out with the rest of the hair just by continuing some of the colours that were in the fur and in the nose into one another. So I just blended the colours from the nose to the fur and the fur to the nose just to get a nice smooth transition. I always try and make sure that I do that otherwise your nose ends up looking like it's a button which is just attached onto the fur rather than being part of the face. So you need to always make sure that you blend your colours together and your areas together so that you don't get any weird harsh lines. So after I'd finished the nose I carried on with the beard and the rest of that wiry looking fur. To make my life easier with this I could have actually used an embossing tool to create the really white hairs on this but I thought I'd give myself a bit of a challenge and just use my pencils and try just creating the texture with the pencils as a technique. I found that this worked really well and I was really pleased with the outcome of this. It was a little bit of a test for me but I think the final result was actually really nice. So to create all of these darker areas what I did is I applied the same principle to the beard and I went in with my base layers first so one grey one and one grey two. Then I went in with a dark sepia pencil and added in any of those really really dark fur lines which I could see on the face. So the dark parts that you can see coming off of the beard and underneath the eye, I applied that technique, put down the base layers, then I went in with my darker colours, then I reapplied some of the mid-tones back over that and just blended everything out, used my Caran d'Ache white pencil and the lighter tones just to burnish everything and then darkened everything up where necessary. So again, looking at the contrasts between the lights and the darks on my reference photo and then applying that to the drawing. The neck on this portrait was actually where it got quite interesting and where I was able to use a little bit more pressure with the pencils to create a little bit of a richer tone. So for the neck I actually used a bit more brown ochre and burnt ochre and some burnt sienna just to create those really nice sort of chocolatey brown colours on there. I used exactly the same technique, putting down my base layers, then going in with a few of the darker tones just to add in some of those really really dark areas and then going back over with my mid tones. The neck actually had quite a blurry look as well, so I made sure that I kept everything quite smooth, made sure that I didn't have any hairlines that were quite prominent, and that's really key to making something look quite blurry, just making sure that everything's nice and smooth and you don't have any prominent hairs or any prominent features which are popping out. You want to keep everything nice and smooth and blended to create a nice blurry look. So that's basically it for this portrait of Riley the Border Terrier. I hope me explaining a few of the techniques and the way that I've layered the colours on this have helped you guys if you're working on something similar or that you can apply these techniques of what I've explained to any of your future drawings. If you haven't done so already then please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon to be notified of all of my future videos. And don't forget to follow me on all of my social media sites, I'm on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and all of the links are listed in the description below. Again, if you would like to know what I'm working on, then everything is listed in the description below with links of where you can buy it. And if you fancy checking out some of my materials, then you get 10% off of your first order in the UK at Jackson's Art. Anyway, guys, that's it for today, and I will see you in another video. Bye!